Buonasera, buonasera a tutti e benvenuti a un nuovo meetup di .NET Code. Hello everyone and welcome to a new .NET Code meetup. Questa sera parleremo di ASP.NET Core e GRPC. E abbiamo un ospite speciale che è Anthony Giretti, qualcuno di voi lo conoscerà perché scrive par parecchi articoli sul blog. Uh, Tonight we will uh, talk about uh, ASP.NET Core and uh, GRPC together with a special guest as uh, Anthony Giretti. Uh, uh, come avete capito questa sera il, lo speech sarà in inglese, abbiamo anche degli ospiti non italiani, quindi ci saranno degli intervalli di italiano perché Anthony è uh, italo-canadese da quello che ho capito, e, però lo speech sarà prettamente in inglese. Uh, since uh, we have uh, not uh, too much time, uh, time uh, to speak, uh, I immediately give uh, um, uh, uh, Anthony the opportunity to start the meetup. Uh, Anthony, eccolo. Hi everyone, ciao a tutti, cari cugini. Spero che state tutti bene in questa situazione. Sono molto felice di essere con voi oggi, so let's go. So the uh, topic today is GRPC and ESP.NET Core 3.1, how you need to know. Um, before starting, I will thank Havanad for, his, for their community support. Uh, what will we see today? Uh, I will introduce uh, GRPC uh, in uh, .NET World, uh, how GRPC is working in ASP.NET Core 3.1, Uh, what's GRPC Web? What's uh, GRPC Web in a .NET world and how it's working uh, with ASP.NET Core 3.1? Um, how GRPC and GRPC Web working in Azure? Uh, what's the difference between and uh, commands uh, between GRPC? and REST, and why we should use or not gpc.net. We will end the session with a little demo. Let's go. So what is gpc? gpc is RPC framework designed and uh, open source by Google. The RPC is remote procedure call. So RPC uh, is re really not new, but uh, in 2004, uh, Google has implemented Uh, his own uh, RPC framework named uh, GRPC. It has been released uh, in 2014 and has been written in many languages. Uh, Several sites, 10 languages are supported uh, GRPC except .NET. Server side, uh, same languages plus .NET because Um, GPC team has written a C Sharp library for .NET application for consuming GPC services. The specialty of uh, GPC is working only on HTTP2. It's not working at all with uh, HTTP1. Uh, for many reasons, I will tell you a bit later. How the serialization is working. Uh, G um, Google and GRPC is uh, designed uh, with protocol buffer. What are protocol buffer? Um, there are schema definition like uh, WCF, uh, if you remember. Uh, it's a contract. It's a contract definition that allows to serialize and deserialize. Uh, not in XML like WCF, but in binary. Another uh, specialty of GPC, it's not compatible at all with browsers, but there are some workarounds I will tell you a bit later. Not supported by Azure App Services and IIS. It's true and it's false at the same time. I will tell you why. How does GZRPC work? This is very special and common. It's an HTTP request, but it works only with the same word, verb, sorry. Past only, 
the content type is application uh, slash gRPC, and it's working with classical headers like any HTTP request, and with specific headers named trailers. Trailers are some um, custom metadata uh, reserved to gRPC. Uh, trailers are in the headers. HTTP status is always returned. So whatever uh, whatever happened in the um, in the application, even if it crashes, uh, the HTTP status will be always 200. This is the gRPC specification, so it's always a path that return a HTTP status 200. But if you want to know uh, what happened in the application, there is a gRPC status uh, dedicated to gRPC and that will help you to debug client side what, what's happening. As I told you just before, the response is always in binary. Let's go, uh, let's go to see what is the gRPC status. There are 16 gRPC status, nothing less, nothing more. So it's more simpler like a gRPC uh, HTTP status. OK is always zero. And then one to uh, 16 describe all uh, statuses you can have. Most of time, canceled is like internal error. So you have 13 internal or canceled. Cancel is, for example, the application uh, crashes, but you don't know why. Internal is mostly used for manage, uh, manage errors. How GPC in ISP.NET Core, .NET Core uh, is working. So uh, as you can see in why this is GPC core package. This is the first package that has been released by Google for the C sharp client. And then uh, Google has built uh, some tools, GPC tools and Google Protopuff. I will show you just after what is used for, but GPC core is the client and the native server. And GPC tool and Protobuf as um, as like uh, their res as responsibility to serialize, deserialize, compile um, your client and your server apps from Protobuf. I will show you up there. And in green, this has Microsoft implementation. And as you can see, they all inherit from uh, GPC team, uh, GPC implementation. What do we need to uh, use uh, GPC in SPNet Core 3.1? We need at least Visual Studio 2019, and we need to create a GPC template. SPNet Core 3.0 is the minimum. So it's, it's an SPNet Core um, application, but there is a special template for GPC. When you create your uh, application, you need to create a protobuf file that will describe your application. Like this, there is a protocol, a protocol buffer file uh, in Visual Studio. You can find it under ASP.NET Core General. How does it look like? It's a service description. So the first thing you have to understand is the syntax. Syntax is the syntax of Protobuf. Protobuf. There are many syntaxes. Proto3 is the third and the latest. Proto2 is deprecated. Package, this is a bit special. It describes the namespace, if we can save it, if we can say it, uh, to your GPC service. Just after you have your service description, you name the class and you name your uh, operation. For example, RPC who is returns who is reply. RPC introduce yourself, takes in parameter introduce yourself request, returns yourself reply. 
these parameters and responses are named messages and you need to define them. So it's look a, a, a bit weird if you see empty message request here. It's because uh, Protobuf and gRPC requires uh, empty parameters, even if you don't have any parameters to pass to your uh, operations. That's mandatory. So I name it empty request. For the response, this is a message too. And what who is reply? This is a string uh, named messages. Equal one means only what is the order uh, in the serialization. So if you have many properties, you have to name it by their order. Name equal one, job equal two, because uh, protobuf uh, when it's Unserialized, deserialized needs to know in what order your property is read from the binary. That's it. As you can see, it supports uh, arrays or list name repeated and uh, enums. I won't describe the whole syntax of Proto3. This is very huge. We can do it in another meetup or you can follow my blog articles if you want. Okay. Now you, you, you are just written your uh, protobuf. You need to compile your application and protox. This is a proto, uh, proto, protobuf compiler behind the scene, behind the VR studio scene will uh, compile your services and uh, put these files in object debug.net core app uh, directory. Once you have identified your classes, you can write your services and your clients because it's an auto-generated class for my own services and my own services GPC. The first one uh, is written for me describe messaging. The second one is for describing methods and HTTP clients. Once it's done, you can write your services. You name your services as you wish, and you inherit it from the base class that has been uh, generated. And then you need to override your methods like this. So uh, here it's not an HTTP context like, uh, like a REST API. HTTP context is available and it's available within the several context. So it's an HTTP request plus uh, GRPC metadata. How the startup needs to be configured? You need to add GRPC met extension method in configure services. I if it's your first uh, uh, service, uh, ASP.NET Core will add it automatically uh, for you. So it's auto-generated by the gRPC template, okay? And if you want to add a service, uh, you have to go to use endpoint and map gRPC service and add yourself your own services. You have to make it. And just before map get, this is very important. So it's quite easy. Now I want to, to consume a gRPC service. So uh, you have to right click on your project, uh, select service service references and find the protobuf, the, the protobuf file in your solution. That's it. This is, for example, a console app. If you want to generate the client, it's the same as the server uh, method. You need to like just we did import your protobuf and compile it. Beyond the scene, protoc will generate your classes. It's a bit different. Instead of exposing the server methods, it will expose to your uh, console application, your uh, uh, HTTP client. Then you can write your first client. So, uh, as I told you, GRPC team has written a .NET, uh, C-Sharp.NET 
um, library, you can consume it from a classical .NET client. For example, a .NET, a classical .NET uh, client. You have to use GPC core and use GPC channel and call your client. You can definitely use a, a classical .NET client and an ASP.NET core on the other side. The client, like a REST API, doesn't know the technology uh, from the server. Now, if you want to write a .NET core client, it's quite different. They build uh, their own uh, packages and it's different. You can see you can use HGPC client, so it's an extension method written by Microsoft. You can consume the same client and you can add it in the dependency injection system. Here it's a console app, but you can definitely use it and consume it from another SPNet core. So an SPNet core client can consume an SPNet core GPC web application, no problem. Once you have written your client, the way to catch your exception is RPC section. Everything is inside. I will show you a debug sample just after. What can we do in GPC in ASP.NET in ASP.NET Core 3.1? We can do authentication uh, like Kerberos authentication, token GWT. You can make crude operation. You can make you can use logging, audit, and monitoring. You can use application insights, but if you remember well, uh, GPC, whatever you do, returns uh, HTTP 200. So using application insight, it's possible, but it's not really efficient. You won't see any failing call. You always see post, okay, 200. Global error handling is available with interceptors, name interceptors. Uh, Elf check library is available. You can do uh, or implement integration test. Unfortunately, a native validation like uh, you have in SPNet, classical SPNet MVC is not available, but I've written a library, custom library based on Fluent validation. And this package is named Calsolary GPC.NET uh, client validation. I uh, will show you a little demo just after. So now let's talk a bit about GPC Web. What is GPC Web? GPC Web is for browser, designed by Google and improbable. They designed a JavaScript library that consume uh, a GPC service. But as I told you, GPC is not compatible uh, with browser. So how can we make it working? Uh, you need to use a proxy like Envoy that maps HTTP2 requests to HTTP1 requests. So GPC Web can send HTTP2 requests but receive by downgrading the protocol HTTP1 response. So with that proxy, with that kind of proxy, we are able to use GPC on in a browser. What is the content type? It's quite different. It's, it's application slash GPC dash web or application slash GPC dash web dash text. There is a little difference between them. One is available for unary call. The second one is compatible with both unary call and streaming call. I told you. No, I forgot to mention you can do unary call with GPC like a rest, uh, a rest, any rest uh, call, or um, or some streaming. The connection because HTTP two can stream data from the client or from the server. This is a nice feature, and it's a reason why they use only HTTP two. 
they wanted to implement uh, server-side streaming to the client and even for a browser. So the things to remember, originally GPC Web is a JavaScript library. So how can we build an application uh, like Angular, AngularJS, React, or whatever? Uh, you have to download product manually. This time you don't have Visual Studio to, to, to do it. So as a front-end developer, you have to download product. I will show you the whole procedure in my GitHub repo just after. Uh, and you need uh, to download a plugin if you want to, 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 to make it with TypeScript because product is compatible with many languages except TypeScript. It produces JavaScript and you need um, a plugin to, 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 to make it work with TypeScript. Like uh, the server side in ASP.NET Core, you need to generate entities and clients. So for one service, you have four uh, generated files. Definition, definition files for TypeScript and services and client and messages in JavaScript. If you see on the right, how can we uh, write in TypeScript a call? This is a GPC unary. You define your address and you consume the response. It's a bit complicated because um, in GPC web, uh, the response is not in binary, is in base 64. It's base 64 encoded. Now, let's talk about GPC Web in ASP.NET Core 3.1. It's a really new uh, feature. Uh, it hasn't been released uh, at, the, at the same time as uh, GPC. Um, Microsoft announced in February the support of GPC Web uh, server side. What does it mean? This is a, a new feature that allow to uh, to transform your request, your GPC request, uh, into GPC request compatible with the browser. In fact, it does the same job as the proxy. It's a built-in proxy that transforms HTTP2 requests to HTTP1 and replaces uh, binary serialization by base64 serialization. That's nice. So you don't need any more any proxy. So it makes it really easier to write web application from for a browser. Or not only for a browser, you can use Electron. Uh, if you want, Electron GS for people who knows. How does it work? It can be used server-side, not only uh, on the browser. So a new package is available and you can write a GPC web client. So it's very useful for um, Blazor apps, Xamarin apps, or uh, any .NET client. The client is just not the same. This is a GPC web handler. That's it. GPC and GPC web in Azure. Okay, so um, GPC is not supported at all by uh, Azure App Services because uh, HTPC, this is uh, not IIS, but uh, IIS like this is a Windows IIS server only for Windows, if I could say it. Why it's not available? Because trailers, this kind of metadata, are not implemented and not are not compatible with HTTP sys. So this is the reason why GPC can't work with Azure App Services. But GPC is supported by ICE. ACI, Azure Container Instances, so you can make some, you can containerize with Docker, for example, your uh, your GPC application and deploy it in Kubernetes. 
and it's also compatible uh, with Kestrel. Kestrel is a self-hosted mode. Uh, this is more powerful for uh, um, for exposing ASP.NET Core um, application, more performance uh, as high as, and it's compatible with HTTP2 and Trellis. So it can be deployed as uh, a self-contained service in VMs, for example. GPC Web, interesting. This is now supported by Azure App Services, Windows App Services or Linux App Services, compatible as well with ACI, IAS, and Kestrel for VM. That's good. What's the difference between GRPC and REST? So as you can see, status codes are very different. So you cannot handle an HTTP uh, request like and vice versa, like GPC requests. Serialization, binary versus JSON. Uh, people have made some um, some measures and binary serialization with GPC for a same payload as a web API is 25% more performant. That's good. In GPC, HTTP2 uh, is only supported versus REST, HTTP1, HTTP2, since ASP.NET Core 2.2 are supported. Another difference, one is a code generated, another one is not code generated. So if you can, uh, if you can, if, if you wonder what is the major difference between GPC and REST, one is more performant and the other one is more convenient. So there is no good choice, there is no bad choice. It depends on you and the browser support. But it's not true because if you really want to use only GPC, not GPC web, you need to use a proxy. While using or not GPC, interesting. Uh, I love myself uh, GPC for its performance because uh, it uses binary compression, 25% more efficient than a JSON, but it also profits uh, of HTTP2 benefits, multiplexing, etc., etc. So HTTP2 is very more powerful than HTTP1 for two reasons. It's convenient because it exposes unary call, so like a uh, simple HTTP request, I do a request, I just get an answer and that's it. Or there is an uni unidirectional streaming. Uh, for those who was wondering if gRPC can replace SignalR, it's, the answer is no, because SignalR, the purpose is to keep uh, a connection uh, alive for a very, very long time. gRPC even if HTTP2 is made to not close the connection and uh, reuse it itself for another request, this is not the purpose to maintain a permanent connection in GPC. So GPC won't replace Signora. Both are APC uh, um, technologies. In GPC, we have a strict specification so versus uh, HTTP cl classical HTTP request, there is no debate on URL or should I use post, should I use delete, get, put, patch. The debate is closed, it's always passed. And it's the same for your format. GPC framework write itself the, uh, the URL. You don't have to write it. So you don't have to manage anything about that specification. So no debate, you consume it as is, you don't need to talk. Once again, it depends on you. If you like code generation versus not uh, coded, uh, coded entities, it depends on you. Some people like to auto-generate the code, some people like write, to write it by themselves. Depends on you. Just a little thing, it's not 
uh, it's really new in .NET world, not in the uh, computer engineering world, but in Microsoft ecosystem and especially in .NET, it's not really mature. It's just not, just new. Um, for example, as I told you just before, there is no uh, custom validation like data annotation in ASP.NET MVC, for example. So sometimes you will miss some feature, and for me, in some cases, it's not mature, but it's functional and efficient. Now, let's go to the demo. I'll open Visual Studio. Here we are. Let's see my um, country service. So as I told you, I, we can add authentication. It's deactivated here. And uh, we can uh, get the user. It's possible. If you want to get the current user, you can catch. Anthony, Anthony sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you magnify the size of the screen? On this studio, the zoom. Yes, I just can. a little bit. Thank you. It's okay. And uh, also, we have a question. Do you want to, a question now or? Uh, I can after? answer. Okay. Uh, is there uh, something like uh, WS transaction for uh, GRPC? Uh, transaction, you mean a WS transaction? Yes. Yes. There is, is a, uh, ah, the question is, uh, is it supported by AWS? Yes, this is the, uh, okay, I show you the question. Oh, let's talk about this at the end, if you, if you want. So, oh, okay. okay, thank you. Okay. So, uh, let's go. Uh, you can definitely catch the current user by uh, getting the HTTP contents and you can get the user. So you can do anything like an SPNet Core Web API. You can make crude operation. So you have to uh, make your own definition, uh, your own specification. And uh, I suggest you to make well-known uh, method names because uh, GRPC uh, hasn't had, hasn't, doesn't have any specification, clear specification on crude operation. It supports injection dependency, like any SPNet core uh, application. Here is the startup application. So as you can see, for GPC web, you need to add cores. And uh, I wanted to show you, this is a GPC service that is only compatible in GPC mode. And when you enable GPC web uh, on a service, it's compatible at the same time for a GPC web request or a GPC request. How? Is it possible? G the use GPC web middleware makes possible. If it detects application slash GPC, the server will understand, oh, you want binary. I will send you binary. If the server detects application slash um, application um, dash uh, text, etc., etc., GPC, uh, GPC, it will send you base 64 encoding. That's it. So let's execute it. And I will show you a demo from a console. Okay. Let it run. It's compiling. Okay.
let's run the console hub. Here is the console hub. I added a poly example, so you can add poly uh, in your JPC client. It's fully compatible with. It's compatible only with JPC client, not JPC web client, because uh, because the implementation, it's not applicable to a JPC web client. So here is a definition and let's run it. Oh. It's not running. Does Poly work? Let's see. Free retries, and now what's happening? I get my exception. What's in the GRPC exception? Let's see. I cannot make, make it bigger, so hope everybody can see it. What is in the message? Status internal detail internal error. What can we see in the headers? There are traders here. And you have some data here. This says these are metadata. Uh, from the gut from the server source and then you can see everything like a classical client you need to deserialize it when it works fine i won't show you i'm sure you trust me and now i will make you a little demo of gpc web in Visual Studio Code. Here is a component that requests my call. As you could see just before, it's a bit complicated. It's a bit huge, but it's also more efficient than uh, JSON, even if it's encoded in base 64. Let's go to the demo. And here we are. This is my application. And as you know, uh, it's base 64 encoded, but I used uh, gpc dot, uh, dot text, so the response is readable, is human readable. What we can see here, I can see my response. And if you are wondering why there is a gpc status in the body, this is normal. The thing you have to know with gpc and gpc web is, when a call succeeds, the GPC to zero is in the response body. And if it fails, it's in the header. So it's not at the same place depending if it fails or succeeds. You can definitely, um, uh, as I told you, deploy it in Azure App Services. As you can see, it works fine. And if you want, you can host your app in a static website that is able to work with your app service. So that's it for the demo. I just wanted to show you if you want to learn more about GPC, you can find my uh, GPC series. Not done yet. Uh, I have many stuff. I have a lot, I have much stuff to, 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 to remaining to write. And uh, you can uh, go to my GitHub and you can see all feature I'm writing in my example. One more thing and I'm done just after. I need to get back to my PowerPoint here. Here are the wall resources you can use 
uh, to get more information about GFPC. This is very huge. I, I did not describe everything. So if you want to learn more, you can use these uh, that references. So that's it uh, for me. Thank you, thank you, Anthony. Uh, I think that is, is uh, when I did my speech in the past. Uh, sometimes happens that a demo is not <laughs> is not as good, so this is not a problem. Um, we have uh, some uh, question. Oh, the demo was working. It was an intentional fail uh, from me, but I can show a demo when it's when it's working if you want. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, a demo. OK, a working demo. Let's go. No, no, it was purely intentional for me. So. What happened? What? What happened? Oh, there is a bad exception here. Oh, OK, I fix it. That's right. Now let's start again. Oh, I forgot. You can see in the console everything. So logging is enabled. OK. Mm -hmm. Now let's restart. Somebody is writing me a question. No, OK, let's go to the demo again. I have a, okay. a question. Yes, please ask me. Yes, is uh, the response encrypted like uh, HTTPS? Yes. Yes, you can definitely use HTTPS. I forgot to mention that GPC requires HTTPS. You cannot use you, you cannot use it as an HTTP request. OK. So I'm back. So let's run the demo. This code is uh, downloadable from my GitHub, so you can try by yourself. So everything I'm showing you is available. Oh, it seems working. Yeah. What's happening? OK, countries. Oh, beautiful, yeah. it's working. Yeah. Yes. So yes, I, uh, I intentionally had an error to make a demo for Polly. That's why. Mm -hmm. OK, questions? Yes, another question. Um, something native uh, to handle uh, transaction? What do you mean by transaction? I think that was uh, WS uh, transaction, uh, the question before. Oh, Microsoft hasn't implementing anything uh, for that, so uh, I can ask to the GPC team uh, and can uh, send to the requester uh, the answer. I can send it to the product team, definitely. Okay. Um, an another question. Hi, Anthony. It's possible to use uh, gRPC web uh, with the uh, Angular client app? Yes, it is. This is why this is my current demo. This is an Angular 8 uh, with TypeScript, but you can definitely use it with Angular JS in per JavaScript too. No problem. Okay. Uh, and uh, about the transaction, uh, uh, acid transaction, uh, you mean? Acid transaction? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. There is nothing uh, from Microsoft uh, about this topic. OK. Uh, another one. Uh, what happens if I need to change a contract? A proto contract, I, uh, I think. May I append another property in the next position without rebuild the client? Uh, unfortunately, it's um, it's like a swagger. If you change the contract, you need to tell the client uh, it has changed, and you need to expose a new protobuf 
that the client will reuse. So it's the same as a swagger. You, you, you show the contract to a client. If it changes, you have to tell him. Right. Microsoft is implementing uh, a swagger uh, a swagger feature for GPC. So the client will be uh, aware uh, more easily. But anyway, you have to send to send to the client the product file. Yes, you but, need the, the product file. Exact, but you can manage versioning. I forgot to mention a uh, versioning is available uh, in GPC. Uh, if some, if everybody remembers what package mean, package means, uh, as I told you, the namespace of the protobuf. So you can have version one as a package, version two, version three. This is used for the versioning. So you won't break the application. You can manage versioning. There is no other question. Um, do, do you think that we can uh, start to, to play with gRPC in uh, production environment uh, or uh, is too early? You can for gRPC uh, if you can host it properly. OK, mm. so uh, it doesn't work on Azure App Services. You have to remember that, but you can self host it in a VM. It's fine. It's working. Okay. But GPC Web is still in preview. The GPC uh, Web packages is in preview free. It's working, but Microsoft recommend to not use it in production right now. OK, thank you. Um, uh, there are no more uh, questions. And uh, if you want, you can uh, ask uh, Anthony, other question in the meeting room, uh, I send the link on uh, the chat uh, and uh, I have uh, to a big thank to Anthony. OK, uh, thank you. Anthony, this is uh, uh, I, he, he is uh, lunch time because he's uh, from uh, Montreal. Is right, Anthony? Yes, I live in Canada. It's 1 and 17 p.m., but it's OK. Don't worry. <laughs> we are near dinner and you are near uh, lunch. Uh, and uh, a big, big, big thank you and big applause for you. Uh, thank applause you. for me because... Uh, <laughs> Mi ha okay. piaciuto di essere con voi tutti. Sono tanto felice. Grazie mille. Grazie, grazie, Anthony. Uh, next meetup, il prossimo meetup ci sarà la settimana prossima, uh, il, il 21 maggio alle 18.30 parleremo di Azure App Service. Next meetup we will talk about Azure uh, Service Plan, but is uh, in Italian. And uh, adesso uh, faremo la lotteria dove saremo il premio messo a disposizione da Avanad, che ringraziamo per il supporto al nostro meetup e alla nostra community. Now there is a prize uh, and uh, there is a lottery. You can uh, scan the QR code and then uh, put your name, first name, last name and take your photo and you can uh, challenge to win the prize of this meetup. Uh, Anthony, you can try. <laughs> yes, that's why I'm that's what I'm doing. OK. Aspettiamo qualche minuto, wait two uh, or two minutes uh, to send your photo. Take a selfie, oh my God. Yes. <laughs> send. OK. Also, this oh. evening the price is a uh, uh, subscri uh, annual subscription to um, plural site. Hi, Francesco.
Okay. Also my photo. Uh, do you like this affiliatory idea, Anthony? Oh, it's awesome. <laughs> Magnifico. <laughs> Bello. Bravissimo. <laughs> Mi piace. <laughs> we, we normally do uh, meet up in room uh, once uh, or in the last uh, period, uh, twice, uh, two times a month. And um, sometimes we have uh, some gadget or uh, license uh, to give away. And... Uh, I, I, uh, I deployed this application to uh, as a lottery to give a prize to the attendees. You can change also. Bel gato. Ah, yeah. it's my colleague. <laughs> <laughs> Which is the mouse? <laughs> okay, two more seconds. Okay, I closed the lottery and now we can see the winner is Davide Guida. Oh my <laughs> God. Davide, you're the winner. We, I have your email and I will send you your prize by email. Uh, ti manderò il premio via mail, Davide, è un'occasione anche per sentirci. Uh, signori, io vi ringrazio, ringrazio Avanad per averci supportato, per il premio che ha messo a disposizione e, e ringrazio tutti voi. Thank you to all. Uh, Grazie a tutti. Chi vuole ci può seguire nella, nella meeting room, uh, per gli altri appuntamento la settimana prossima. Grazie Anthony, thank you Anthony. Thank you Anthony. Ciao, thank See you. you. See you under the chat. Uh, sì, Anthony. sì. <laughs> Bye.